Good morning, and welcome to Potomac United Methodist Church on this beautiful day, the last Sunday in August of 2015, and we've got a good one. Uh, it's a chance for us to be together uh, and worship God and share a few announcements. One is to ask for prayers for all those of our church family who are ill. We've had two meetings canceled today alone because of illness. So in particular, if you can keep the Edwards in your prayers, both uh, Cherie and Dave are down from the count. Uh, so they're, I mean, and they're healthy, vital, part of us people. So we really want to keep them in our prayers. And the Howards are also have whatever it is that some people are having, uh, a cold or infection. So which reminds me, as people are coming in, it gives me a chance to say, during the passing of the peace, do not feel compelled to hug if you do not wish to. Um, there are several different traditions that we've used in this church. One, which is used in many countries, is simply to greet people like this. But if you don't feel comfortable, you can keep your hands behind your back. You can give the fist bump, the elbow, bump. So there's lots of options. The point is that we connect and wish people the love of God and the peace of Christ. So um, I know now everybody will be trying to do something different and we'll be all confused, but that's not always a bad thing. So the worship committee meeting after church is canceled today. So if you are part of that group, uh, we will reschedule. I also uh, would like to let you know that the church council uh, which is the leadership of the church and anybody else who wants to be part of it is planning to meet on September the 23rd for planning and visiting. You know, we go through these cycles and I think we're at a point again where we're kind of looking into our future to see where God may be leading us on the next leg of the journey. And then to let you know about uh, Faith in Action on the 26th, we're doing a number of mission projects on site, including the uh, bike collection, Bikes for the World, where we collect bicycles from our folks and the folks in the community that are given to developing country, people in developing countries, where it really makes a difference in their economic viability. So that's uh, for our information. Uh, Sunday school is starting today. We have a baptism, and it's such a pleasure to welcome all of you had the uh, pleasure of marrying you. Flo had the pleasure of baptizing you, now four years old, and Louisa baptizing you today. This family has three grandparents and three great-grandparents here to be part of the baptism, so that's a, a nice celebration. We welcome all visitors, and as always, we take a moment to say hello is there anyone who is near, new here? And if you all are, could you just raise your hand? We're not going to ask you to stand, speak, or of anything. Welcome to Potomac United Methodist Church. We're glad you're worshiping with us. And we'd like to give you this small gift to uh, let us know that we're glad you're here. And anybody else totally new, not here ever before. Now you, sir, you did say you were checking us out this morning, so... Have you been here before? <laughs> okay, I thought you looked kind of familiar. Well, we're glad you're here today. And that's a reminder for all of us, uh, if we're visiting or if we've been here for 50 years, we're asking, uh, if you can cho choose to do so, that you fill out this worship attendance form. Uh, we like comments, but just your name is fine. and Put it into the offering plate as it comes your way. This is one way that we can keep covenant with you uh, and then if you're not here, we reach out to you uh, so we know that. Is there anything else to share with the good of the group, the congregation right now? Come to the anniversary celebration. I'll talk a little bit about that later. Um, in the meantime, can we bring, let's, let us bring our reflections and our prayers together as we give thanks to God.
Let us be called to worship. Come and worship all you who love and seek God. Come as you are, for this is God's house, a home for all people. Open hearts, open minds, open doors. We strive to be open to all people. Amen. Let us pray together. Creator of life, you invite us to give up our old ways and follow your way. We admit we keep taking detours and sometimes wind up lost. Help us to stay aligned with you. Help us to see you clearly and to follow you more closely. Amen. Please be seated. Holy God, help us to rejoice on this day of new beginnings for us as a body of Christ and as a family of the faithful. At the beginning of a new school year, O oh God of wisdom, we do offer thanks and praise for the gift of new beginnings and for the opportunity to learn and to wonder. We pray for teachers, students, and staff that this year might be rewarding for all. Be with us as we face the challenge of new tasks, the fear of failure, the expectations of parents, friends, and self. In our learning and in our teaching, may we grow in service to others and in love for your world. Our prayer of hope extends beyond this place and beyond us into a world so much in need. We pray for all those who are injured in body and spirit. We pray for those who have died from gun violence this week, particularly around the shooting so close to us at Smith Mountain Lake. We pray for all who have been affected and all who continue to be affected. As we pray for people in this world who are without a place to call their own, people in transit, refugees, people looking for a new life, a new beginning, but finding none. Help us to do what we can to reach out to people so much in need and to this restless world. We pray, dear God, to be able to calm the restlessness of our own souls and to reach out to those who are a part of our family, those whose names are printed in our bulletin. Be with these dear souls Remind us of who we are as your people, and may we always be called beyond ourselves and into the greater world of which we are a part, knowing that you are every place. All this and more we ask in the name of Jesus Christ who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen.
Good morning. Our Psalter reading today is the 138th Psalm, which begins on page 853 of your hymnal. Please rise as you are able. I give you thanks, O Lord, with my whole heart. Before the gods, I sing your praise. I bow down toward your holy temple and give thanks to your name for your steadfast love and faithfulness. For you have exalted your name and your word above everything. On the day I called, you answered me, you strengthened my life. All the rulers of the earth shall praise you, O Lord. For they have heard the word of your mouth. And they shall sing of the ways of the Lord. For praise is the Lord of the Lord. For the Lord is high, but regards the lowly. Though I walk in the midst of trouble, you preserve my life. You stretch out your hand against the rocks of my enemies, and your right hand delivers me. O Lord, fulfill your purpose for me. O Lord, in the midst of my love you are forever. Do not forsake the work of your hand. I see. lesson this morning comes from the epistle of James. James was an apostle identified as a kinsman of the Lord and this is a general epistle 
directed not to a particular congregation, but rather to Jewish Christians scattered throughout the world. The reading is James chapter 1, verses 17 through 27. Every generous act of giving with every perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of lights, with whom there is no variation or shadow due to change. In fulfillment of his own purpose, he gave us birth by the word of truth, so that we would become a kind of first fruits of his creatures. You must understand this, my beloved. Let everyone be quick to listen, slow to speak, slow to anger, for your anger does not produce God's righteousness. Therefore, rid yourself of all sordidness and rank growth of wickedness, and welcome with meekness the implanted words that has the power to save your soul. But be doers of the word, and not merely hearers who deceive themselves. For if any are hearers of the word and not doers, they are like those who look at themselves in a mirror, for they look at themselves, and on going away, immediately forgot what they were like. But those who look into the perfect law, the law of liberty, and persevere, being not hearers who forget, but doers who act, they will be blessed in their doing. If any think they are religious, and do not bridle their tongues, but deceive their hearts, their religion is worthless. Religion that is pure and undefiled before God the Father is this, to care for orphans and widows in their distress, and to keep oneself unstrained by the world. This is the word of the Lord. Please rise for the gradual hymn, which is Dear Jesus, in whose life I see, number 468 in the hymnal, and then remain standing for today's gospel lesson. remain standing for the reading of the good news that is found in the gospel according to Mark, the tradition of the elders. Now when the Pharisees and some of the scribes who had come from Jerusalem gathered around him, they noticed that some of his disciples were eating with defiled hands, that is, without washing them. For the Pharisees and all the Jews do not eat unless they thoroughly wash their hands, thus observing the tradition of the elders, and they do not eat anything from the market unless they wash it. And there are also many other traditions that they observe, the washing of cups and pots and bronze kettles. So the Pharisees and the scribes asked him, why do your disciples not live according to the tradition of the elders, but eat with defiled hands? He said to them, Isaiah prophesied rightly about you hypocrites, as it is written, this people honors me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. In vain do they worship me, teaching human precepts as doctrines. You abandon the commandment of God and hold to human tradition. And then he called the crowd again and said to them, listen to me, all of you, and understand, there is nothing outside a person that by going in can defile, but the things that come out are what defile. This is the gospel of our Lord. 
Praise be to you, O Christ. Please be seated. O creator of us all, be with us this day. Cleanse the spirits that you have put within us that we may be refreshed in body and spirit. Remind us always that we are yours and are called to a greater purpose than our own. This we pray in the name of Christ, who came to show us the way. Amen. September the 13th is going to be a great day for this church. And I hope you all and your friends and your relatives and your neighbors can join us on that day. We have a lot to celebrate. We are celebrating anniversaries, the 10th year of ministry in the parish center. We have completed the 25th uh, Strawberry Festival at this church. We have been on this site as a worshiping congregation for 161 years. And there has been at this site a worshiping congregation for 300 years. So it's an anniversary. And it's our traditional rally day where we rally around the children and the teachers. We all come back together after the summer and we begin again. This year it's going to be a bit of a homecoming. There are people traveling from outside the state to come back and be with us. And so it's a little bit like a family reunion. We'll be a little bit like a family reunion. The family of God, the family of this church. Now I think we all know about family reunions. Many of us have participated in these kinds of events over the years. Uh, For many years, for most of my life, every year, we would travel down on Labor Day weekend, traffic or no traffic, to outside of Roanoke, where my father's family came from. We would uh, find, not on the navigation system, but it's there, La Prade Way, turn onto that road, go up to the family homestead, past the mill that made flour for bread for centuries, La Prade Mill, and then on to the family homestead, the the farm there. And we as kids would have a great time because we'd immediately get out and go look at the pigs and the horses and all the animals and we'd visit with people we hadn't seen in the last year. And then before we ate, there would always be prayers and some speeches about the family. And once I was ordained, I was Uh, considered um, okay enough to read from the family Bible, which itself was so old that it was fragile. You had to hold both pieces of it. Then there would be a prayer and a grace, and then we get in line for this delicious food, ham that had been smoked at a smokehouse down the road of one of the relatives, lemonade that had been made in a, a tin container, huge, Uh, People had been for days cutting up lemons and adding sugar and letting it all uh, become lemonade, which takes a few days. I'll never forget the taste of that delicious lemonade and all the food, and people would bring their specialties. And then, once we had visited, we'd scatter. And some of us would go down the lake, and we'd play there. I learned how to water ski there. Smith Mountain Lake, that was where we grew up as a part of a family reunion. Well, now there are no more family reunions, not for the little Prad family. People have scattered to the four winds and they're not willing to come back together for that one event. And so the reunions have ended. Uh, Things have changed. Yeah. Things are always changing. Things have always changed. It didn't start with a horrific tragedy this past week when a shooter killed 
two persons in a local news crew and injured another. It didn't start there, but this tragedy hits a little closer to home than some others maybe because it happened nearby. I, several of you independently have talked to me about how it happened in our neighborhood. I know some people in this congregation have property at Smith Mountain Lake. A number of us have been there at least once. It's very accessible to the D.C. area. It's beautiful there. And such an innocent occasion on the day of that story, the interview about the 50th anniversary of the development of Smith Mountain Lake. And then the shock and the horror and the grief, maybe disbelief at what had happened there and where. It is unsettling, to say the least. But you know how it is. It won't be long until that situation goes to the back of our minds and a new tragedy will arise. For tragedies do continue to arise all around us. They just don't always get that kind of attention this one has. On Friday night, fatal shootings brought the number of homicides in D.C. this year to 105, equaling the number of gun deaths there in all of 2014. Two of those shootings took place at churches named St. Luke's, one of which is the mission station of a United Methodist congregation. In Baltimore, also a city in our area, right up the road, 45 people were killed in July. All but one is African American. All but one is male. They include a five-month-old boy and a 53-year-old grandmother. 44 black males killed in one month in one city. How long is this going to continue to happen? Vester Flanagan, the man who shot and killed Allison Parker and Adam Ward, bought two Glock 9mm handguns from a federally licensed gun dealer in Virginia. There was nothing in his criminal background to prohibit that transaction. Even Vester, the man who carried out that heinous crime and then killed himself, he knew himself well enough to know that he was about to go over the edge. He wrote, as you may know, after the shootings, he wrote, I've been a human powder keg for a while, just waiting to go boom. Why make it so easy for a deadly weapon to be put into the hands of a man who knew himself well enough to write, I've been a powder keg for a while, just waiting to go boom. Booms, all capitalized letters. And an outcry has gone up. And it happens every time. Every time some shooting, some mass shooting occurs, there is a cry for action against gun violence. There is a demand for basic things like banning assault-style firearms and creating common-sense gun laws, including a reasonable system for background checks. And then it doesn't happen and another horrific mass shooting takes place. Did you know that there have been at least 72 mass shootings in the United States in the past three decades, and that most of the killers got their guns legally? The majority of the shooters, though not all, have been white men. This has been going on for decades these mass shootings. In 1982, do you remember? A male teacher, age 51, opened fired inside a welding shop and 11 people were injured and killed. 
And in 1984, a 31-year-old man opened fire at an upscale nightclub, and seven people were injured and killed. The list goes on and on and on. It's easy enough to find if you want to know. And each time, there's been a call to end gun violence and to get the guns out of the hands of people whose problems make it unsafe for them to own such potent weapons. And then another tragedy happens. And those tragedies are going to keep on happening if nothing changes. Because people do forget and go on. People become self-absorbed. You heard in the scripture that um, Larry read from James, people look in the mirror, see themselves, and they forget, rather than look at God's righteousness. Because powerful and well-funded groups keep appropriate change from happening, but because people also don't have the energy or the endurance or the will to keep raising their voices in protest and doing what is needed to make effective change. But friends, that's why we as Christians do need to stand and be counted. This is not about gun ownership or hunting. This is about something more. We need to stand up and be counted because our salvation is not rooted in our current effectiveness. What I mean by that is that we as Christians are people of the way, as we were called since the beginning of the Christian movement. We are rooted and grounded in such a way that if there's some wrong to be righted, it's not about how long it takes. We don't act because some horrible event has galvanized us. We act because of Christ in us, and that doesn't change. That's what gives us the strength needed to sustain the action that leads to change. But one of the um, clearest examples of this is the civil rights movement. Uh, that was faith-based. Many people knew that segregation was wrong, but they didn't have the energy that it took to stick with it. The majority of those who endured the fight were Christian because they knew there were not going to be short-term fixes, but that's not what they were about. They had a vision. They had a vision that reached all the way into eternity, and if that's what it took, they would have kept at it for that long. This is our DNA as Christians. Once we're convinced, nothing can deter us. No discouragement or disillusionment saps our strength because the source of our strength is not us, thanks be to God. It's not about us. It's about God in us. The reading from James reminds us that we are not merely called to do something, we're called to be doers of the word. And that gives more focus to our action. What's more, when we look at the long-term vision, the perfect law, as James called it, when we do what he called people to do, which is to persevere, be not hearers who forget, but doers who act, they will be blessed in their doing, and we would be blessed in our doing. And it's not about the goal, it's about the way. I mean, we hear so much these days. Each day there are more crises. I mean, it's all over the place. We listen, we maybe watch, we read, and then we go on and we forget most of the time and that certainly makes sense from a human point of view. We've only got so much to give. We've, we can only remember and act on so much. We can only take in so much. We can only take so much. Louisa agrees. I can see that. We don't want to clap, collapse under the weight of our sorrow. Better to forget, and so we do. You know, I recently read uh, George Orwell's dystopian uh, novel, 1984, 
which probably many of you have read at one time or another, it's amazing how much of that has, in some sense, come to pass. But at any rate, one of the, the qualities of the inner party members, the small group of people who are the inner elites who control most of the population, one of their particular abilities is the, the ability to forget at will, at a moment's notice, to forget on self-command. And they did it to themselves. It's one of the fundamentals of what the book calls mind control. Well, our attention spans are getting shorter. We've all read about that, and it's for many reasons, including the way we process information through the internet. I mean, I experience it. I go online to research some particular topic, and then there's a link that I feel like I need to learn something more uh, so I can research the topic. So I go to the link, and then in the link, there's maybe an advertisement or something about a story that looks interesting. So I go to that story, and a half an hour or more later, I've forgotten what it is that I went then there to research in the first place. Anybody else ever been there? Perhaps? We're doing this to ourselves. In some senses, we are training ourselves remarkably well to forget and to do so very quickly. But Jesus, through the Gospel reading today, reminds us that just because things are the way they are doesn't mean they need always be that way. Just because there is a tradition doesn't mean it's sacrosanct. Just because guns are easily available to people who are unstable and background checks required for gun purchase are meager at best, just because gun violence and mass shootings have escalated doesn't mean it has to be that way. Claim your power as people of the way, and it won't be that way. Make the difference that you can make. Be doers of the word and not hearers only. And in the meantime, if all that seems overwhelming, for heaven's sake, at the very least, remember the words of James let everyone be quick to listen, slow to speak, slow to anger, for your anger does not produce God's righteousness. Welcome with meekness the implanted word that has the power to save your souls. Welcome with meekness the power that the implanted word has to save your souls. Open hearts open minds, open to the word of God before our words. Thanks be to God for the word of God and for hope. Amen. Okay. Louisa, we've had a kind of call and response thing going on here. It's been a blessing. And uh, we come now to one of the you know, the, the really enjoyable parts of worship in the church, which is uh, welcoming new people to the family of faith. And as I said at the beginning, this particular family is uh, very much a part of the tradition of our church and the current of our church. And I've married the parents, I've baptized the big brother, and now, Louisa, it's your turn. So I'm going to ask that... Um, you as the family come forward and gather around the baptismal font as you well know how to do.
All right, I'm going to invite everybody to turn to page uh, 39. Brothers and sisters in Christ, through the sacrament of baptism, we are initiated into Christ's holy church. We are incorporated into God's mighty acts of salvation and given new birth through water and the spirit. All this is God's gift offered to us without price. I present Louisa Elizabeth Walter for baptism. <clears throat> All right, I have a few questions to ask you two. In the name of the whole church, I ask you, do you renounce the spiritual forces of wickedness, reject the evil powers of this world, and repent of your sin? Will you say, I do? Do you accept the freedom and power God gives you to resist evil, injustice, and oppression in whatever forms they present themselves? Will you say, I do? Not unlike your marriage <laughs> vows, right? Brings them back. Do you confess Jesus Christ as your Savior, put your whole trust in his grace, and promise to serve him as your Lord in union with the church which Christ has opened to people of all ages, nations, and races? Will you say, I do? She's ready. Will you nurture Louisa in, God, in Christ's holy church that by your teaching and example she may be guided to accept God's grace for herself, profess her faith openly, and lead a Christian life? Will you say, I will? Okay, we're going we're gonna to go to the Thanksgiving over the water, which is on page 41. May the Lord be with you. Let us pray. Eternal one, when nothing existed but chaos, you swept across the dark waters and brought forth light. In the days of Noah, you saved those on the ark through water. After the flat flood, you set in the clouds a rainbow. When you saw your people as slaves in Egypt, you led them to freedom through the sea. Their children you brought through the Jordan to the land which you promised. <clears throat> Sing to the Lord all the earth. Tell of God's mercy each day. In the fullness of time, you sent Jesus nurtured in the water of a womb who was baptized by John and anointed by your spirit. He called his disciples to share in the baptism of a death and resurrection and to make disciples of all nations, declare his works to the nations, his glory among all the people. Pour out your Holy Spirit to bless this gift of water and she who will receive it to wash away her sin, to clothe her in righteousness throughout her life, that dying and being raised with Christ, she may share in his final victory. All praise to you, to Father, through your Son, Jesus Christ, who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns forever. Amen. Christian, you're doing a great job, <laughs> really. And Louisa? Now it's your turn. You ready to be baptized? Okay. Let's see how this goes. Well, okay. Let's 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 do this. Kristen, you come over. I think we've got a liturgical dancer growing up here. I love to do liturgical dance, Louisa. So you can stay right there in your father's arms. Louisa. Elizabeth Walter, may the Holy Spirit work within you, that being born through water and the Spirit, you may be a faithful disciple of Jesus Christ. I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And you know what we've said before, that when a child is crying during baptism, Louisa, that means that the devil is coming out of you. <laughs> so the rest of your life, it's going to be good, okay? It's going to be good. All right, she's listening. That's good. Now, I am going to ask that we turn to page 44 to Congregational Pledge number 2. And this is for you. Members of the household of God, I commend to your love and care, Louisa, as well as this whole family, 
who this day we recognize as a member of the family of God. Will you endeavor so to live that this child may grow in the knowledge and love of God to our Savior, Jesus Christ? With God's help, we will so order our lives after the example of Christ that Louisa, surrounded by steadfast love, may be established in the faith and confirmed and strengthened in the way that leads to life eternal. Now, you may remember that there is a tradition in this church, which I don't know whether we want to follow or not, but um, that people love to see the baby that they've agreed, or the child or the adult, that they've agreed to pray for after baptism. And so we walk up and down the aisle. Christian, would you be willing to walk with me just a little? We won't take her out of your arms. And meet the newest member of this family of God. This is Louisa. And Louisa, you might want to check it out. All these people are now part of your spiritual family. And they have agreed to pray for you and to help bring you up in the spirit of the faith. So all these people are here for you. May the peace of the Lord be with you. Let us pass the peace. <laughs> having heard <coughs> the word <coughs> having heard the word of God, let us continue to respond to God's word in our life as we wait upon the ushers to receive our offering.